There. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Gamers Grotto, for pointing out that I was talking with no audio. But I guess it's working now, right? So, I'll start in the beginning. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Sorry for uh, not having audio in the beginning. The we have here today is a book called 101 Basic Computer Games by David All, who worked at Digital Equipment Corporation, DEC. They were a very big maker of um, computers in the 60s and the 70s. And uh, this book, 101 Basic Games, what he tried to do was go to all the different, like, basically um, schools, like universities and huge companies that had computers back then and gather information, mostly from universities, on, on what games people had written and try to make a book where they translated all these games to the, into the basic language and um, play, and basically this way you can, you can go through this book here and you can, it'll tell you, let's say, about this game and then you can type in um, the listing. Let me so find an example. So here's like a program listing. Uh, no, that's not a program listing. There's a program listing. So you can go ahead and type in, let's say, this whole long thing, and then you can actually play the game. Now, I'm not going to torture you by making anybody watch me type stuff in. Luckily, somebody's already done this all for us. So I want to go through some of these. These are really like some of the earliest games ever made for PCs because what ended up happening is once people got what they call microcomputers, so like the Apple, TRS-80, you know, Commodore Pet, and others before that, the the Altair, which is like really the first one, um, they had wanted to play games on those too, and so they got copies of games that were going around in the mini computers, like the DEC, the PDPs, and they created versions of them for the microcomputers. And because these are written in BASIC, it's a very easy language to, to translate, essentially. And so these games ended up being spread far and wide. They were made eventually for DOS and all these other things. Some of them are very simplistic. Some of them are, are not. Um, some of them are, are cooler. So I want to go through some of those. Before I do that, I want to do one other thing because you know, it's always like a slow start to these streams. There's a few people on right now. I found this random disc, which is actually an Atari disc, um, called Letterman from APX, the Atari Program Exchange. Atari Program Exchange was a thing that Atari set up where people could make their own games and send them, or programs in general, send them into Atari, and Atari would publish the best ones, like in sort of a catalog. And that was the Atari Program Exchange. I found this loose disc lying around. I, I'll show it to you guys quickly, just for the sake of whatever. It's not this boot error. Uh, hold on one second. Let me just attach the right disc here. There was another disc that I tried to use that was actually broken. All right, now it's actually booting up this disc, I think. All right, so let's see. Run D. I think it was a letter man. Something like that. Oh, that wasn't it. Hold on one second. See, unfortunately, you got to like find the right incantation to actually make this work. Uh, where is it? Hold on. Reminds you of Bible Challenge with the NES. A random person made a Nintendo published it. Yeah, I don't know if these... I think these guys got paid. Most of the games... Um, oh, there it is. It's LTTR. Most of the games in this um, in this compilation... I'm sorry. Most of the games by Atari Program Exchange were, like, not so wonderful games, but there are a couple of them that were super popular. The best example probably being Eastern Front, which was written by Chris Crawford. Uh, it was a war game, one of the early war games, and it was a super popular game, apparently. I, I had a copy, a pirated copy back in the day. Well, I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to actually make it work. <laughs> like, it was so complicated, I had no idea what the hell was going on. Am I not even showing this on the screen right now? Uh, yeah, I am. Okay, good. I want to make sure. I thought, like, for I wasn't showing the screen. All right, here we go. Welcome to Letterman by Ed Stewart and Ray Lyons. Yeah, this is, for people joining, this is just like our intro stuff here. Before we actually get to the, the media. <laughs> hey Lester, glad you could make it. This is Letterman Late Night Show Simulator. That's funny. I guess Letter David Letterman was around, so maybe uh, this was a joke. Uh, this is like basically Hangman, um, and you, you know, with with some key animation. So I'm not gonna play it very long. Let's see if I can select word level. Uh, it's been good luck. And I'll say no hints. One player. Let's say no time limit. 
There goes your ears bleeding again. Was it was it too loud or was it just bad? I'll be I'll lower the volume a little bit if it's too loud. Sorry about that. All right, uh, let's say so you can you can have it so like you can type in a word and then somebody else can guess it, or you can uh, just have it pick a word for you. So I'll do that. Uh, select a word. All right, so this is supposed to be the hard level. So let's see. No A. So I guess the arrow comes closer and closer to the guy as you miss, but like the arrows aim for like it's like the, the music they play was the was like the William Tell Overture, wasn't it? So they're showing like uh, the arrow heading for his. Didn't William Tell like shoot shoot the arrow off the guy's head or something off his son's head? But I don't. But like, why is that dangerous? Like, he's not gonna kill him. Right, let's try E. Ooh. So I, I know he runs around when you get when you get it right. So what the hell word is that? Uh, anybody know what word that could possibly be? Uh. <laughs> uh, maybe okay. Let me try a R. Oh no R. Uh, any Lester and uh, gamers growl says volume is likely on my end. Crank to hide to know my neighbors. Can't even hold I partying. So he came up on I was two's game reviews. <laughs> nice. Uh, what the hell could this possibly be? Maybe eagle. Ah. Oh, just no. It can't be eagle. There's no A. I re <laughs> that sounds good though. Uh, what, what the hell is this? That's funny that I got the right letter, even though it's wrong. Uh, help. I guess it is hard. I'll try a G anyway. Nope, no G. Uh, I'll try another letter. Another vowel? Let's try a... I have no idea what this is. Let's try a I. Okay. E tile. E zile. E aisle. E kyle. E dial. E file. E file? <laughs> e file? I don't know. Uh, e kyle. Exile. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> so I get to see their animation. If I'm turning fat or something or turning a circle, I'm not sure what that was. No, the apple goes to the ceiling. All right, so we'll do one more and I'll get it wrong. So we'll see what happens if we get it wrong. Uh, so let's select a word. I probably wouldn't have gotten exile, by the way. So thank you for that help. Right, let's do Q. No Q. Let's try Z. No Z. Let's try V. No V. Let's try W. Oh my god. X. Y. It was Ruminate. Oh no. Applesauce, he says. Oh, so. Because it killed the apple. But see, that wasn't really very deadly for him, so. I'm not sure what the point of that was. I actually like this. Yeah, well, you know, it's it was only like a couple bucks probably from Atari Program Exchange. I'll do one more and I'll try to actually get it this time. And that'll be the end for this game. Another really short word. Normal letters are A and H. Well, that wasn't A. No A. No E. No I. I got an O. U. It's a couch. <laughs> I don't know why I think it's that, but... Nope, it's not couch. Uh... Oh, it can't be... Ca oh. Uh... It can't be fourth. There's only five letters there. It can't be fourth. Five letters. Uh... Let's try something like that, though. Youth. Okay, let's try a T. Well, it's not youth, but there's a T. Uh, what else could this be? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try an L. Joust? Okay, maybe. Let's try S. No S. Uh, let's try an 
L. Oh, let's try an N. Maybe it's a like count or something. Doubt. So they purposely gave me a, a word with basically hard letters. That's why it was the hard... Because, like, you're not going to get to the right letters in time, essentially. All right, that's enough for this, though. That was just to, to warm up the stream here. So I'll minimize it in case we want to play it again later. But you're right. Probably this will be, That will probably be the best game we played today because that actually has graphics. And for the most part, the rest of these games, which are designed for mini computers, don't even have that. Uh, let's see. Command prompt. How do I get this to work? Hold on. Window capture 2. Command prompt. I gotta make this bigger. I can don't. I can make my. Uh, I can make my, my picture come on, but like I feel like you'll be able to see it if it's that small. Let me see if I can get it bigger. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna eliminate my picture for the sake of science. Hold on. All right. Now we have as much much real estate as we can out there. I doubt you can solve this, too. <laughs> All right, so basically, again, we have this book. There's this website called Vintage Basic, which actually has a nice basic program that runs in DOS, and they actually put basically copies of all these games. So I'm going to start going through them. Again, you know, some of them might be terrible, but these are the 101 best games they had in 1973, so let's put it that way. All right, the first one is called uh, AC Juicy. It's... So where is it? AC Ducy dot bat. Uh, so I type vint. Wait, what is that? Does it work? Vint bass. AC Ducy dot bass. All right. So AC, can you guys see that? Or do I have to make it bigger? Like I, the text is pretty small. I don't know how it looks like for you. I may have to make this window like grow bigger or something. Wait, I think I will try to do that. Let me try to do that. I'll just try to expand it. There. Because I don't think it's going to get, like, any way more than that. So, hopefully you can see it now. Uh, it's okay anyway? Alright, well, it's even better now. ACDC's plays in the following matter. The dealer or computer deals two cards face up. You have an option to bet or not bet. Depending on that, you feel the card will have a value between the first two. Oh, I tried this before. If you don't want to bet and put a zero, here are your next two cards, eight ace. So basically, I'm betting on whether the next card drawn is going to be between an eight and an ace. So like if it's a nine, then I win. If it's a one, then I lose. So let's say I bet $5. It was a 10, so I win. And I have $105. My next two cards, five and eight, so I'll bet zero because that it can only be a six or a seven for me to win there. So call me chicken. Next one's five and ace. Let's say thirty dollars. There's a ten, so I win. So I have one hundred and thirty-five dollars. The next two cards, five and eight again, zero. Six and seven, definitely zero. Four and ten. The fact that you bet zero sort of ruins it a little bit. I win. Seven and ace, ten dollars. I win. I'm really doing well here. One hundred and fifty dollars. The thing is, I just think this goes to like forever. I I don't think there's like any really point to playing honestly sorry you lose sorry you lose I mean I can lose all my money I guess and I'll probably like you know, go out say about 100 I actually lost because it was a 5 3 and queen it was 48 I won 5 and king let's bet all 96 I lose sorry friend but you blew your wad <laughs> I guess that's my wad of cash that I had um, try again, yes or no? I'm gonna go with no because that was pretty, pretty basic. Okay, hope you had fun. So, uh, what do you guys think of that game? Was it? I sure as hell hope so. <laughs> what you, was that? Was that? Was that wonderfully exciting? Uh, let's try the next one. Um, actually, the next one here is not even a game. It's it. Draw, it I'll show you what it is, but it it makes a maze. But it's actually not a, like a game on the computer. Amazing. It's amazing, maybe? Yeah. Um, thrilling, LOL. <laughs> so, amazing program. What 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 are your width and length? That's a little personal, isn't it? Like, 
I got to give you this information. Like, all right, so width is, I guess, like three inches and length is like 14 or something. I guess what they were asking. I don't know. So now it, it made a maze for me. That's three, three by 14. And then I could, you know, go through the, I was just pretty simplistic maze because it's not very wide. But it, it, it basically, I can go through the maze and play it. If I print this out and like do it on paper, I can give it to somebody and have them, you know, go through a maze exercise. But not not too exciting again. Okay, the next one's even even worse actually. So I apologize for the quality in advance. The next one is called Animal. Animal. I played the first couple already. I didn't play most of these though, and there are some good ones. I promise, or some okay ones. Play Guess the Animal. Think of an animal, and the computer will try to guess it. Lester says, that maze will keep my young kid amused. <laughs> How young is, it? is your young kid? Are you thinking of an animal? Well, let me take a drink. Are you thinking of an animal? Yes. Oh, I guess I have to have caps lock on. Yes. Does it swim? Actually, I wasn't even thinking of an animal. Let me think of a dog, okay? Does it swim? No. Is it a bird? No. The animal you're thinking of was a dog. Please type in a question that would distinguish a dog from a bird. So, like, does it bark? For the dog, the answer would be yes. Are you think So now, it, like, learned something about a dog, basically. Are you thinking of an animal? No, I think it'll take you a drink. Eight years old. Okay, cool. So let's say I'm thinking of a horse now. Are you thinking of an animal? Yes. Does it swim? No. Does it bark? No. Is it a bird? No. The animal you're thinking of was a horse. Please have a question that would distinguish a horse from a bird. Like, does it neigh? <laughs> For a horse, the answer would be yes. So basically, the longer you play this, the smarter it gets. The, like, the smarter it gets. But basically, you're just teaching it. Like, I mean, teaching is a very basic word here. But you're sort of teaching it like how to distinguish to these different animals yeah lester says this isn't a game it's an exercise in computer learning uh, essentially yes i agree so it's not worth sp it's not spending more time on it the next one here no f off no 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 go to hell all right control c all right so the next one here is called awari and apparently, this is like um, an old, like an ancient game, which which I used to have a game like this called Mancala um, on like on like a board game, like a, a, a tile game where these numbers were like pegs. Oh, gamers, gratis! We built this exact game in high school computer basic class. I'm assuming you mean the animal thing. I mean that makes sense because like. I think that's what that's what I'm saying. Like these games that they took from here, they actually have a lot of life to it. They went on and they, you know, people keep using them over and over again. So this this game here, I'll show you what it says here. Uh, here, like my side and your side. There's numbers. One two three four five six. One two three four five six. So you pick a number. And each one of those numbers represents like a, a little hole with with a, with a certain number of like marbles in it. So if it says three, it means there's three marbles in the hole. When I the way this game works is, I mean, I'll, I'll read this. What it says here, I'm reading is too complicated. The way it works is if you you pick a when you, on your turn you pick one of your one of your t uh, bins on your side, and mine is the bottom, and. Whichever one you pick, it will take all the marbles out of that out of that bin, and it'll start placing them counter sorry counterclockwise around the thing. So if let's say I take let's say I take from uh, let's say let's see my arrow here. God, uh, can you see the the? I'm not sure if you can even see that. You probably can't. Um, can you you can't see my mouse pointer, can you? I'm assuming not. Can you see the mouse pointer that I'm moving around? No. Okay. So if you let's say I take the th the three on the bottom right, then it'll put one in the zero, which is I think my home base. And the next one will go. The next three will be make that four, 
and the next one will be four over there. The way it works is if you um, finish off a turn by ending in your in your home base, you get to go again. You can only do that once, though, apparently, in this version. And the second thing is, if you finish a turn in a blank thing, like, let's say this three, three was a zero. Oh, you can't look on. You can't see what I'm pointing to. Damn it. How do I make the mouse work so you can see the mouse? Uh, is there a way to do that here? Let me see something. Uh, properties. Capture, uh, capture cursor, it says, but there's no cursor in this thing. Hold on, let me try it like this. Oh, you can see it now. There we go, okay. I'm, I'm stupidly trying to point in on the, like, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay. And let's say I take this three over here, and I pick it up. It'll go one, two, three. So it'll, it'll make this three into a four. It'll make this zero into a one. It'll make this three into a four. So if I take this one, it'll go one, two, three, and I'll end up in the zero. If I end up in my whole base, I get another turn. If you finish off a turn in a blank one, let's say there was nothing here, and I took this, um, before, before I read you that, that Lester, if let's say I finish over here and it was blank, I get to get all the marbles that were on the other side and put them on my home base. So Lester says, there's a very popular Malaysian version of this game called Kongkak, with seven bases per side and seven seeds marbles per base in the beginning. Yeah, I've played a version with four marbles per in the beginning, and it was called Mancala. Um, this one is called Awari. And I guess it's like there's a bunch of games like this that were that are like you know old games, like games probably everybody in the world played at one point. Anyway, I suck at this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick. I'll do number. You'll see what happens to me. I'll do number four, which is this one I'm pointing at here. So what happened? It got it dropped them into this one, this one, this one. I got one in my base, and I get to go again. So that sounds sort of good. So now I'll do take this one here. Which has, and I'll move it to here. This way I'll get to capture these three, right? So that sounds like a great idea. Fortunately, it doesn't really work. So I'll do one. So I did that. I got those three. And then he moved this one, number five, no, number five. And he got, he went one, two, three, and he captured this three over here. And somehow he ended up with six on his side. I don't, I don't even know how he ended up with six. Um, maybe he's cheating. All I know is that I got five, and he has six somehow. I mean, like, I guess, like, one fell in when he moved one, two, three, but, like, and he cleared this one, but how did he... Should it be five also? I, I don't I don't even know. I... I I would think he would have... I, I, based on my math, I would think he should have five, but somehow he has six. I feel like he's cheating. Like, I'm not... Like, I... I anyway, the bottom line is I can't win this game. That's that's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like... I, if, now I have no good moves, because no matter what I do, I can't... I can get to my home base, I guess. Let me try that. Look, uh, so I'll hit number three, which is this one here. So I got to go again, because I got a six here. But now, the best I can do, I mean, is nothing really. I can't, I can't do anything useful. Um, and I'm gonna end up in a situation where he's gonna be able to get a bunch of stuff himself, probably. Yeah, unless just how is that possible? I can't figure out. Yeah, I, I think he's cheating. I mean, that's all that I can think of. Or it's I, the program is not programmed correctly. Basically, is what I think. Um, I don't know how he can. Yeah, I don't know what the hell he's doing, but somehow he's able to, to do something here. Let me try to move the this four. I'll try that. So, I'll do number two. I think I tried that last time and it was bad. But let's try it again for argument's sake. Alright, so he did four, which is here, so he got in, fine. And then he did one, and he got in again. And what is this one? How did he get nine? Uh, he took the three from his second base, came to your first base, and then pocketed everything. Oh, so he gets he gets both sides. Oh, I think you're right. No, wait a second. All the beans in the opposite pit together with the last bean sewn. Right, so he gets both sides. So you're, I guess you're right. Okay, and then how did he get nine just now? Um... 
he got he did he got one in here with the he did the four, and then he did one, which is okay. So he caught this one over here. All right, so I guess that's how he did it. Bottom line is he's kicking my butt, <laughs> and I this, and I have no, no good moves either. I don't think good to do. Like all my turns, they just I can't get anywhere with the six or any of these sixes. So I'm just gonna use my move by two, I guess. Um, it seems like a bad move, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, that's n number four. So he moved six comma five now. I, I don't know what the hell he did. Oh, I know he's winning. Yep, he's got all the moves. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, bottom line is I, I seem to suck at this game. That's what I'm just trying to tell you here. Number five, I don't know. I can't get any points. Game over. I win by five points. So anyway, that's that's this game. I'm not I'm not playing it again, but I, I don't know. I I think I just, I just don't know how to play it. So that's the bottom line. All right. Uh, my move is Control C. All right. The next game here is called Bagels, and Bagels is a number guessing game. Apparently, wait, it doesn't exist. Hold on. I, did I just spell it wrong? Bagels. I saw it there just now. Wait. Bagels. No. What's wrong with this? It's right here. Bagels. What am I... What's wrong with that? I'm sorry, like... Is it spelled differently? Oh, is it, sp is it spelled like this? Like bagels? Okay. I'm stupid. By the way, just so you see, in this book, <laughs> it's spelled the way I spelled it, bagels. But I guess that's the wrong spelling. All right. Would you like the rules, yes or no? Let's go with uh, yes. I'm thinking of a three-digit number. Try to guess my number. I'll give you clues as follows. Pico, one digit correct, but in the wrong position. Fermi, one digit correct, in the right position. Bagels, no digits correct. So basically, it's like Mastermind, essentially, I think. So I'll say guess number one. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. Pico, so I got one digit correct, but in the wrong position. Let's go four, five, six. Pico, so it, it, has, it has one of those numbers of each. Let's try... Uh, Two, six, seven. Bagels, nothing correct. Let's try three, five, eight. One of them is correct only. Let's try uh, three. Let's try four, three, nine. Nothing. Wow, I suck at this game. Um, so I guess the five was right. So it's, I didn't try zero, so, um, five, zero, one. You got it. Okay. So that's, that's, that's this game. Play again. No. A one point bagels buff. Hope you had fun. Bye. It's nice that they, they talk to you a little bit. I mean, I get, again, like, so if I'm not a, a university, no, no, hey, Scott, how's it going? Numbers hurt my head, Scott says. I guess if you're, like, on a university mainframe in 1970, you know, like, Maybe this is, like, really exciting entertainment, but not for me, it, is, it isn't. All right, the next program is, again, not really a game. Um, it's just a thing to print a banner. Let's see if anyone has it in here. Horizontal. They go on measurements again? I don't know. All right, horizontal 10? I don't know. Vertical 50? Centered? Yes. Character? Type all if you want character being printed. I should probably read the instructions here. All statement stews game reviews set page. I don't know what that means. No. <laughs> All right, maybe I should read the instructions. Hold on a second. Uh, the letter height should be uh, uh, 
up to 50. I wonder, I wonder if the apostrophe crashed it, by the way. Let me try that again. Um, 10, 50, yes. All Stu's game reviews. No. Let's try yes on that last one. 10, 50, yes. All Stu's game reviews. Yes. What are they looking for there? Let's just enter. I don't know what they're looking for. All right. Let's see. Oh, there's a sample run. It doesn't even ask that there. All right, I give up. That one doesn't work. Set page engage. That makes more sense. All right, let's try the next one. This is interesting. Baseball. This is a simulation of a nine-inning baseball game with you controlling the pitcher when your team is in the field and controlling the batter when you're up to bat. The simulation stops at nine innings, hence it may be a tie, ga a tie game, or that has proved to occur remarkably few times. So this one should be interesting. Let's try baseball. That's what's it called? Hope it's there. Oh, it's, it's not here. Wait a second. They don't have this one. Oh man, that would suck. All right, I got to go find this. It looks like it's not in this directory for some reason. Uh, all right, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a homework for me. We'll skip to the next one, which is basketball, and that one's here because I see it. Um, let's try this again. Basketball. This program simulates a game of basketball between Dartmouth College and an opponent of your choice. You are the Dartmouth captain and control the type of shot and defense during the course of the game. There are four types of shots. Long jump shot, short jump shot, layup, and set shot. Both teams use the same defense, but you may call it with press, man-to-man, -man, zone, or none. To change defense, da -da -da. this game is biased slightly in favor of Dartmouth, it says. But not much. All right, uh, let's try to run it and see what it's talking about here. So, Vint ba Bass, right? Basketball.bass. All right, this is Dartmouth College Basketball. You'll be Dartmouth Captain Playmaker. Call, sh call shots as follows. There's <laughs> no great basketball songs that come to mind. That's funny, Scott. When they play the basketball game, it's like, you know... Uh, like they, they show like you know clips from from movies, don't they? All right, uh, you'll be Dartmouth Cannon player. Call shots as follows: One is long, three foot jump shot. Two is short, fifteen foot jump shot. Three is layup, four set shot. Both teams use the same defense: press, man to man, zone, or none. Our uh, starting defense will be I guess zone. Choose your opponent. Is my opponent? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Harvard. I don't know. <laughs> we'll rock you. All right. Layup. Harvard controls the, the center's jump. Harvard controls the tap. Layup. Shot is missed. Harvard controls the rebound. Pass back to Harvard guard. Jump shot. Shot is off rim. Harvard controls the rebound. Layup. Shot is good. Soar is zero to two. Okay. Um, I'm going to go for a, uh, a short jump shot. Jump shot. Shot is good. Two to two. Jump shot. Shot is off rim. Harvard controls the rebound. Pass back to Harvard guard. Jump shot. How come he gets the rebound every time? All right, I'm going to try. I'll just do a layup this time. Three. Shot is off the rim. Darwin controls the rebound. Ball pass back to you. Your shot, two. Shot is off target. Darwin controls the rebound. Ball back to you. Your shot, two again. Layup. Shot is off the rim. Darwin controls the rebound. Layup. What? I didn't press layup a second time. Wait a second. How come? How come the last time it just it just did an automatic thing without asking me? And I really suck, by the way. <sighs> Two to six. I believe I can fly. <laughs> Scott, sorry, I do UCLA. I believe I can fly. Yeah, there's a Space Jam two movie coming out, right? With uh, LeBron or something. Let's try a three point shot this time. Uh, shot is off target. Dartmouth controls the rebound. Layup. Shot is off the rim. Dartmouth controls the rebound. Layup. Shot is good. Two points. How come? How come now it's not asking me all the time? It's just asking me occasionally. Oh, I understand. It only asks me. I'm the captain of the team. It only asks me if actually I get the rebound. If one of my teammates gets the rebound, then the teammate does whatever the hell they want. I guess. We do not speak of Space Jam too. <laughs> Why not? I'll, one sec, I'm, I need to fill up my soda. I'll be right back. Give me one sec. Hold, hang on.
Sorry about that. I don't think I need the headphones anymore, by the way. I don't think any of these DOS games have sound in them, so I think the headphones could probably go away. Uh, this game is all theater of the mind, imagining all that action. Yeah, I know. It's like funny. I was trying to learn, try the three-point shot. Off target. Rebound to Harvard. Jump shot. Shot is off rim. Uh, shot is good. Shot is good for them, too. I'll do a layup, too. Jump shot. Player fouled. Two shots. Shooter makes one shot and misses one. Score six to nine. I'm not doing too well in this game. Anyway, I, I don't know what... It says here, like, uh, the average probability of a Dartmouth shot being good is 62.95% compared to the probability of 61.85% for their opponent. So Dartmouth, they have is slightly better, but, like, I'm still losing. It's still pretty pretty hard. I'm not going to keep playing it for you know more than a couple of minutes. Um, they could do layups. How come I can't do more? Like layups. Also, layups should be like easier to hit. Like if it makes no difference, they're like, sheesh. They, they don't like nobody's hitting any anything here. Come on. And every time see, I notice, every time I get points, they get points right right away. Like does it make a difference here? Even like when I click. Like I think. I think in order to get into this, you really have to, like, you know, you have to end the first half. <laughs> you got to, like, really just pretend, like, to your point, Lester, that this is something real. And, uh, you know, and, like, get into it and have, like, an announcer or something. But I, I don't think that I can get into this. Uh, you know, even maybe in 1973 I could, but let's move on to the next game. Which This was a long text, by the way. Okay. The next one is... Bat num. Let's see what that is. I can change the defense too, by the way, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, see if they actually have bat num. Yeah, there it is. Bat num. A bunch of math nerds hauled around in the computer in the late seventies and find this thrilling. That's funny. Bat num. Bat num. Do 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 do. Bat num. Do 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 do. Bat num. Do 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 do. Now this program is a battle of numbers game. Scott is finds this thrilling already, right? Where the computer is your opponent. This game starts with an assumed pile of objects. You, your opponent, alternately remove objects from the pile. Winning is defined in advance as taking the last object or not. You can also specify some other beginning conditions. Don't use zero, however. This is like NIM, basically. Don't use zero ever in playing the game. Enter a negative number for a new pile size and stop playing. <laughs> That's just the first song I thought of, too. You mentioned the name. <laughs> it's got says numbers make me sick. Uh, pile size, let's say 20. Um, let's say one to take last. Min and max. So min is one and max is three. Start option, computer first or, or me first. Um, I guess I want um, me first. So my move will take, well, I, actually I should have computer first. I'm gonna lose now. I made, I made a mistake there. Wait, the la will I get the last one? I don't remember anymore. Who takes three? Yeah, he's, he's gonna win. He figured out the, the, the algorithm to win. Yeah, so this is basically Nim. Um, it's it's an old game. It's it's stupid though. I'm not gonna. I mean, that's if if you've heard of Nim, you know what I'm talking about. If not, it's it's a waste of time. All right. Uh, the next one here it says is like it's called Battle, and apparently it's like Battleship. It's an enter a negative number to exit. Stupid moron. All right. Uh, battle dot bass. So, battle. The following code of the bad guy's fleet disposition has been captured, but not decoded. Decoded. Decoded and use it if you can, but keep the decoding method a secret. What the hell does that mean? Um, okay, let's see here. Battles played based on the, the popular game Battleship, which is primarily played... Uh, battle first randomly sets up the bad guy's fleet disposition on a 6x6 matrix or grid. The fleet consists of six ships, two destroyers, ships 1 and 2, which are two units long, two cruisers, ships 3 and 4, which are three units long, and two aircraft carriers, ships 5 and 6, which are four units long. The problem is it's a very small board for like that many ships and, and that long thing. I don't know what they're thinking here. 
The program then prints out this fleet disposition in a coded or disguised format. You then proceed to sync the various ships by tapping in the coordinates, two digits, each from one to six, separated by a comma, of the place where you want to drop a bomb, if you'll excuse the expression. The computer gives the appropriate appropriate responses, splash, hit, etc., which you should record on a six by six matrix. You are thus building a representation of the actual fleet disposition, which you'll hopefully use to decode the coded fleet disposition printed out by the computer. Oh my god. Uh, Okay, the first number is the column, and the second is the row. Kind of from bottom to top. Okay. What the hell? This is a weird game. I said, okay, let's try start game. All right, let's try three comma three. Splash. Try again. Let's try four comma four. A direct hit on ship number two. Four comma five. Three comma four. Five comma four. This is basically Battleship. Aim for the sixes. I could. I mean, like, I don't know what the hell this even means. I guess five comma four was a six. Um, four comma four was not a six. It was a zero. <clears throat> so, bottom line is this is Battleship, but without actually printing the board. And probably the reason why was because it was probably designed to be played on a computer that didn't have a screen. Which sounds crazy, but like, um, a lot of the early, I mean, the early computers, the early mini computers, didn't have CRTs or anything. They just had teletypes, and so every time we would print the board like this, I had to print it out on some printer paper. And if they do it every single time, waste a lot of paper, and plus it would be take a long time and be noisy. So they probably figure, you know what, we'll print it out only one time, and then we'll let the guy keep keep score himself. I'm assuming that's what they were thinking. But I mean, as a result of that, it's really not playable today so i'm gonna kill that one and let's go to the next one which is bingo bingo my bomb made a splash out as well (laughs) uh there there was a farmer had a dog did i have the bingo one all right looks like bingo is another missing game unfortunately in this list i'll have to find it let's go to the next one which is blackjack Blackjack. Do you want instructions? Sure. This is a game of 21. There's maybe seven players can play the game. D is doubling down. S is standing. H is hitting. Slash is split. Okay. Okay, number of players. Let's just do one. Excuse me, one second. Scott, you're very excited about blackjack. You're 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 in Vegas or something, right? All right, number one, let's bet. Whoa, <coughs> whoa! All of a sudden, like <laughs> I don't know what's going on here now. Sorry. Okay. So I don't know how much money I have. Let's just say ten dollars. Dealer hit black hit blackjack. So I lost ten dollars. I have minus ten now. All right. Wow. Let me take a hit at the histamine just for the heck of it, in case this is going to be something going on here. Sorry. All right, let's try this again. Let's just bet a hundred dollars. No dealer blackjack, but they do have a, a queen. All right, I have ace and a five, so let me hit. Receive a jack. Hit. I mean, I'm gonna lose, but yeah. See the four. Good. Okay, let's stand. 
Dealers of five conceive for a total of 15. Draws three. Dealers 18. Player one wins. 100. Total is 90 now. Dealers total is negative 90. How can the dealers total be negative 90? The dealers shouldn't... Uh, Lester's got to head out. Watch the rest of the replay. Cheers. Take care. Thanks, Lester. Have a good evening. Always assume the dealer's undercard is a 10. Scott, you sound like you're good at this game. Well, let's try it again. I'll bet 1,000 this time. I guess 1,000 is too much. Let's bet uh, 500. A king and a nine. So, Scott, you would hit on this situation. I would never hit on this situation. Or you can assume whatever you want, but, like, you're going to hit, you're going to lose anyway. So, like, what's the point of hitting? I'm going to stand. Dealer had a two concealed. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a no-win situation because he had a two. Hey, hey, Jeremy. He, he did a two, so he, he got he, he drew a nine somehow, so he got 21. But if I would have picked up that nine, I would have busted. So it was a lose either way. Now I have negative 410. Let's bet 999. Like that's too much also? 700? I guess it's 500 the max? The Mafia is going to, like, haul me out and kill me. You always hit on 15 or 16. I didn't have 15 or 16. I had a 19. Oh, you're saying, okay, you're saying no. All right, you're saying no in that situation. I get it. If a 19, you have to stand. Yeah, I get it. All right. So now I have 15 or 16. He is a 2. So, Scott, what, what do you want to do in this situation? Teach us blackjack. I'm not good at blackjack. I'll freely admit it. I'll right, see what the next game is in the meantime. Boat. Stand. All right. Dealer is a total of 16. Dealer is a 10 concealed for a total of 12. And draws queen busted. All right. So, Scott, you're right. I, I bet came back to 90. So, I think I'm going to quit before the mafia comes and breaks breaks all my hands. You're right, Scott. I, you know, I, I should go through the casino one time. Next time I go out to, to the casino, I think I'm going to take you along. All right, that's 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 let's try the next game though. Next game is called Boat. I think, except they don't have that one. Oh man, they don't have that one either. All right, it looks like a good one too. I'm gonna have to find all these ones that are not in this original list and figure out where they went. And the next one is called Bomber. I don't see that either, but they have Bombardment and Bombs Away, which are not here. So one of those. Let's try one. Of, let's try those two. And actually. What else did I miss from there? I think it was amazing in my book. I think it wasn't. Oh, wait, it was. That was that stupid maze. All right, so everything there so far we've seen. But what's bombardment? Bombardment. I think they used a later version of the book, and that's why it's different. Actually, I actually have another... Hold on. I have another... This is a later edition... Basic Computer Games TRS-80 Edition. Um, let's see, this one has... Yeah, this one doesn't have baseball. And it has Bombardment and Bob's Away and no boat. So I guess they updated the, the games. And the and the the games in this, in this, in this list they have here comes from this one. Um, bombardment, is, is it the same as Bomber? Uh, it's not... Is it the same as Bombs Away? I think it might be. Yeah. I think. Yeah, this is... The, okay, so so Bombs Away is the same as, as as what they call the old book Bomber. But this Bombardment is something different. So let's try Bombardment. So this is theoretically a more advanced game because of the later version. The object of this game is to fire missiles at the outposts of the computer. Let's go to Vegas. I'll be your right back. It'll do the same to you. The first one who destroys all four of the enemy's platoons first is the winner. Good luck and tell us where you want the body sent. Tear off matrix and use it to check off the numbers. So I guess they this was printed out of the teletype and it's saying tear this off and use it to check off what you've already done. Is that what it's saying here? What are your four positions? Oh, so like I'm hiding my things. Alright, let's just say one two, three, and four, just for simplicity. Where do you wish to fire your missile? Your missile? That's how you spell missile. Your miss missile. Uh, let's try it. 25. 
Ha ha, you missed. My turn now. I miss you, you dirty rat. I picked 14. Your turn. Uh, 24. I mean, this is pretty simplistic. Ha ha, you missed. My turn now. I got you. Opie Law now. Post 3 was hit. I mean, like, I don't see what the point of this is. You missed again. You missed. I'm just going in order. You missed. You missed. I got one at 19. Keep missing. It's just, just a war of attrition here. This is so realistic. Ha ha, you missed the standard commentary they teach us in the military. I just, this is such a short game. I'm just curious. Like, I think he's picking the same numbers over and over again, but I could be wrong. All right, I got one of your outposts. Two down, two to go. Ten, nine, three down, one to go. Eight. Uh oh, I got, he got number, post number four. Seven. You got me, I'm going fast, but I'll get you in my transistors recuperate. Okay, that was pretty stupid. All right, let's try the other one. That one that's called um, Bombs Away. <clears throat> Bombs Away. You're a pilot in a World War II bomber. What side? Italy, Allies, Japan, or Germany? Obviously, Allies. Two. Aircraft. Liberator, B-29, B-17, Lancaster. I know Jack squat about military aircraft, so I'll say, uh, Scott, you want to pick Scott? You, <laughs> you just said the Allies. I was going to pick B-17 only because that game that goes, you know, B-17 bomber on the television. And Scott says B-17 also, so we'll pick B-17. You're chasing the Bismarck in the North Sea. How many missions have you flown, Scott? <laughs> 9,000. That's a lot of missions. All right. Missions, not miles. <laughs> That's funny. 150 missions is high even for old timers. Now then, how many missions have you flown, liar? <laughs> how many missions have you really flown, Scott? Not 9,000. Tell us the truth. You'd be crazy, but you're... Yeah, that is pretty funny. Five, all right. Fresh out of training, eh? Missed target by 29 miles. Now you're really in for it. Does the enemy have guns, missiles, or both? I don't know. Guns? What do you want to say? I'll let you pick, Scott. I guess because you picked only five missions, you, it says you're fresh out of training. That's probably why you got, you got, you got missed your target by 29 miles. How about neither? <laughs> All right, guns. <laughs> neither. What's the percent hit rate of enemy gunners? 10 to 50. Let's just make it 30 to be, you know, in the middle. Um, yeah, let me, get, let me get 25. Boo, you've been shot down. Dearly beloved, we're gathering to take a pair of last chewy. That's it? Let's try this again. Another mission, yes. The Allies, B-17. How many you flown? Let's say 100. That's pushing the odds. Direct hit, 68 killed. Mission successful. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's pretty lame. Sorry, Jeremy says my mom called. I wish I had a birthday to talk for an hour. Well, happy birthday to you, sir. Happy birthday to the Gamers Grotto. If you're watching this in replay, because you're certainly not watching it now, but if you're watching this in replay, you should definitely go over to the Gamers Grotto channel and subscribe. Well, after you finish subscribing to this channel, go subscribe to the Gamers Grotto channel for his birthday. No problem. Such a promising start. I agree. I, I'm disappointed in that. I guess it's just a short... It's a very, like, simple program. All right, let's try the next one here. Uh, the next one is called... I'm looking at both the books now. This book, I think, is like some dirt or something. All right, Bounce. the same in both. No. Chicken. Not with you, bastard. I'm not chicken. You're chicken. Bounce. This simulation lets you specify the initial velocity of a ball thrown straight up and the coefficient of elasticity of the ball... Okay. Please use a decimal fraction coefficient less than one. 
It also specify the time increment to be used in strobing the ball's flight. Try point one initially. So if I I'll try point one. Velocity. What is this? Frames per second? Feet per second? I'll say 20. No, that's, that's really fast. But all right, 20. Coefficient. I don't know. Point one. That, I don't know what I did, but, like, apparently the ball went straight up in the air, came straight down, and then just, like, didn't even bounce. Just, like, hit, like, the thing, like, thud, and just, like, rolled. <laughs> so I, I must have had a really strange ball there, but uh, that's fine. I'm glad you let Jeremy... J Gamers Grotto says these are definitely cool games. Bring back memories for sure. I appreciate that sentiment. I think most people, like, if they tune into this channel right now, they'll be like, what the hell is this? Like... Where's the pictures? I'm not, I'm not doing this, but I think it's cool, too. I, you know, I think it's worth at least to check it out one time. All right, the next game is called Bowl. It's a bowling simulation. Let's try that one. Hopefully they have it here. Bowl. A bowling. Here we go. Bowl. Welcome to the alley. Bring your friends. Okay, let's first get acquainted. Instructions? Sure. The game of bowling takes mind and skill. During the game, the computer will keep score. You may compute other players up to four. You're playing ten frames of the pin diagram. Means zero means the pin is down. Plus means the pin is standing. After the game, the computer will show your scores. First of all, how many you're playing? Uh, I mean, I'd like to play with one of you guys, but the, you know, the delay will take too long. Let's just do one player game. Very good. Type roll to get the ball going. Really? What if I type it wrong? Like, how about if I write, like, raw? <laughs> uh, I knocked the ball down except for one. Roll your second ball. Type roll and get the ball going. F U. Spare! Alright, I guess type, I guess you don't have to really type roll. It's just, you have to, they want you to just hit enter, I guess. Roll your second ball. Another spare. I'm really good at this game. All I'm doing is hit enter. Oh, that's a split or something. I still got a spare. Error? What do you mean, error? How is that an error? Is that all you're supposed to do? Just say roll? I guess if I don't get the wall down, it's error, but it doesn't matter what I type, so this is just whatever. Enter, 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 enter. That's it. I'm done. I, what's my final score? Are you going to give me a score? Wow, this is a really bad game. Like It's like, I have no, there's no strategy, no no action, no control whatsoever, and it doesn't even tell me the score. Like, it's even, like, couldn't even do that minimally? Like, who made this game? All right, well... Let's be a little bit nice, because the game was made by a guy named Paul Perino from Woodrow Wilson High School, San Francisco, California. <laughs> I wonder how old this person is now. So they were in high school when they wrote this game. Probably, let's say, 1970. So now it's like 50 years later. They're probably like... Like 60? No, older. They're probably like retiring, this person. It's really interesting. We sh I should like try to find track this person down and be like, "We played your bowling game and it sucks." Do you have any like words in your defense, given the fact that you were in high school at the time, and see what they have to say? I think that might be interesting. <laughs> what do you guys think? While well, I check out what the next game is, next game is boxing. All right, let's try this one. Boxing. Bowling, boxing, boxing Olympic style. Three rounds, two out of three wins. What is your opponent's name? Mike Tyson. Input your man's name. Uh, Little Mac. Different punches are full swing, hook, uppercut, or jab. What is your man's best? Definitely uppercut. What's his vulnerability? Uh, uppercut, I don't know. 
Oh, no, that's my... Oh, sorry. I meant that's my vulnerability. I thought it meant... Uh, I thought it meant his vulnerability. Mike Tyson's advantage is, th is three as uppercut, and his vulnerability is secret. Oh, no. So his advantage is the same as my vulnerability? So I'm dead. Little Max Punch. Uppercut. Little Max tries an uppercut. It's blocked. Lucky block. Mike Tyson gets a little back in the jaw. Ouch. And again, Little Max attacked by an uppercut. We gotta use some music for this. Like, do 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 Lomax attacked by an uppercut. Uh oh. And Mike Tyson connects. Mike Tyson jabs and it's blocked. Lomax punch. Uh, full swing. He connects. Mike Tyson jabs and blood spills. Mike Tyson takes a full swing and pow. Hits him right in the face. Oh my god. Lomax punch. A hook. Lomax gets the hook, but it's blocked. Lomax punch. Uh, jab. Lomax jabs at Mike Tyson's. Head is blocked. Mike Tyson's a full swing is blocked. Mike Tyson jabs and blood spills. Sounds like a legitimate uh, match here. Little match is Max's punch. Uh, let's try full swing again. He connects. Mike Tyson's beating the crap out of me, though. How come he gets two punches every one of mine? Mike Tyson wins round two. Mike Tyson wins. Nice going, Mike Tyson. And now goodbye for the Olympic arena. Okay. <laughs> uh. I think the best part of that game was my definitely my rendition of the Mike Tyson's Punch Out theme music. What do you guys think? I mean, like, I don't understand why the why the opponent was so tough. How come he kept on getting multiple punches on me and stuff like that? Like, what the hell's up with that? But here's the picture that came that comes with this game with this game in the book. Uh, if you can see that, that's the picture. So I guess they they think your opponent is a is a hairy Neanderthal. But, yeah, that's not... Alright, let's move on to the next one, which is called Bug. Bug, I think, is like the game I used to have when I was a kid, a real-life game called Cootie Bug. I don't know if you guys ever played that. The game Bug, I hope you enjoy this game. Do you want instructions? Sure. Uh... I'm not sure what just happened here. But basically, it's the game Cootie Bug. Hey, J-Rock, how's it going? Your ears are glad that you missed, what, the Mike Tyson's punch-out? I can still do it for you again. <laughs> do, 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 you now have a body. I rolled a two. I don't have a body. You rolled a one. You now have a body. I rolled a six. I don't have a body. Do you want the pictures? Sure. So my bug is just a body. But I don't have any control over this. I'm not even, I'm not even pressing the button to roll. I'm just like... Uh, all that I can do is... To, yes. Whoa. Where did it go? Like It's like, scroll off the screen so fast. I can't even see anything. I guess somehow I got like a a leg and a, and a head or something, and he has nothing. Because he has three head, I do not have a neck. And I have a tail, so I'll take like, a picture. I have a tail. I'm doing really amazing in this game without without doing anything. Like that, I mean, all I'm doing is saying, yes, I want the pictures. I have two legs, I have a neck and a tail. This guy doesn't even forget I have a body yet, because he just has bad luck with his dice rolling. Oh, he rolled a one, he now has a body, oh my gosh. So now he has a body too. And he has a neck also. I don't want the pictures. He's doing. Oh, I have a feeler. So I, but it's scrolling off the screen. Let's see if I can scroll back up. 
There's my... Oh, I have a head. Okay, it's cool. I got a head and I have an antenna. And I have a tail and I have two legs. And meanwhile, this guy has... Whoa, where'd it go? This guy has just a... Like a, I don't know, a headless mutation. I have three legs now. I have three legs. Hey, J Jay says the NyQuil is kicking him out of the stream up. All right, cool. <laughs> uh... Let's see. Let's see if I can win. I've. I. He has one leg. Uh, I only want to get p pictures when I'm winning. He got a head now. And he's. He has two legs. Uh oh, he's winning. He's taking over. I got another feeler. Let's see what we're doing here. So he has. He has two legs now. And I have my two antenna. And I have three legs. So I'm ahead. A little bit. He. Oh, he has a feeler too. He's another feeler. I think he's what he has three legs to tie now. If it tie, he has exactly what I have because I guess luck evens out over time. So whoever gets the next couple of legs, I think he needs six legs. They said, uh, is it six legs? So I guess we'll see here. It says if you like to see all the pictures, this program has the ability of consuming well over six feet of teletype paper per run. We can only suggest recycling the paper by using the other side. So, like I said, this they didn't have like uh, they didn't have computer screens back then. Uh, I have four legs. Let's I'll, you know I have five legs. You now have six legs. My bug is finished. Yes, I do want the pictures. Here's your crappy bug. Let's see my bug in all its glory. All right, there's my wonderful bug. But again, like, I didn't actually do anything in this game. I just hit enter every single time. So this game basically sucks. All right, next. Bull cow. Bull cow? It's like bull crap. A bowling, boxing, bug, a bull fight. Bull fight? It's different than this one. I should look at this book. Bull fight. 32. Oh, it's, this is different. It's a bullfighting simulation. Oh, cool. All right. Actually, this was in here, too. Bullfight. All right. I'm going to put this older book away and we'll look at the newer book because that's where all these games are coming from anyway. Bullfights. They added some, some more some interesting stuff. Another, another simulation. Let's go bullfight. Not bass. Bull. You want instructions? Sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop doing that. I hate the stupid freaking touchpad. All right. Hey, all you blood lovers and aficionados. Here's your big chance to kill a bull. On each pass of the bull, you may try zero Veronica, dangerous inside move of the cape, one less dangerous outside move of the cape, two ordinary swirl of the cape. Instead of the above, you may try to kill the bull on any turn. Four is over the horns. Five is in the chest. But if I were you, I wouldn't try it before the seventh pass. Yeah, it's a different, different game. The crowd will determine what award you will receive, you will deserve, sorry, or posthumously if necessary. The braver you are, the better the award you receive. The better the job the Picadors and Toreadors do, the better your chances are. You've drawn a good bull. The Picadors did a poor job. One of the Picadors was killed. <laughs> the Toreadors did a superb job. So, like, if the Picadors is killed, it's like, okay, let's just continue with the game. Who cares? Do you want to kill the bull? No. What move do you want to make with the cape? Let's do the one. Less dangerous outside move of the cape. The bull has gored you. You're dead. The crowd awards you both ears of the bull. Ole, adios. What the hell? Let's try that again. I'll be hearing from PETA soon. <laughs> Alright. The Picador... I've drawn a poor bull. The Picadors did an awful job. Two of the horses of the Picadors were killed. One of the Picadors were killed. And the Toriors did a good job. Sheesh. The bull is charging. You're the bad dude. Do you want to kill the bull? No. What would you want to make with the cape? I'll try three this time. It's an ordinary swirl of the cape. Don't panic, you idiot. Put that at correct number. That was a correct number. I'll try two. 
Pass number two. The bull is charging you. Do you want to kill the bull? No. Try two again. Pass number three. Here comes the bull. Try for a kill. No. Can't move three. Why is that? Not, why is three no good? One. Here comes the bull. Try for a kill. Can't move two. It said don't try to kill him before move seven. Your corpse is on the ground. The white's throwing you. I don't know. Trevor kill no. Can't move one. Trevor kill no. Can't move one. Trevor kill no. Can't move one. I'll try yes. Is the moment of truth? How do you try to kill the bull? I'll let you guys decide. Should I try to kill the bull between the horns, whatever they said, or in the chest? I don't know. Like if it was me, I would like I don't I would I would like shoot the bull. I don't know. Like I would try to stay away from the bull, basically. Someone pumps a <laughs> someone pumps into a mutant bull full of steroids or something. I don't know. Chest Scott says, "All right, two or five. All right. The bull is gorgy. You're dead. The crowd is awarded you nothing at all. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> the hell. I want I want to at least win like not die one time. All right, let's try one more time. Yeah, let's try instructions again because." Oh, it's zero, one, and two. Okay, that's why I was confused. Zero is dangerous inside move the cape. All right. And then four and five is to kill it. You've drawn a superb bill, bull. Good luck. You'll need it. The Picadors did a superb job. All right, so at least everything was superb. Do you want to kill the bull? No. Ordinary swirl of the cape. <laughs> what the hell? What could I have possibly done there? Order like, uh, all right. I give up on this game, and I'm always I'm always giving up for tonight too. Um, maybe I'll do like a couple more. A bullseye is a darts game. Let's see that one. Bullseye. What do you guys think was your favorite game tonight so far? I'm curious, and you can you can also vote for this one if you want. <laughs> And we can try that again, too, if, if you want, at the end. And this game, up to 20 players throw darts at a target with 20, 30, 20, 10, 20, 30, and 40 point zones. The objective is to get 200 points. Scotts is the bull is a former Special Forces Navy SEAL. Yeah, maybe. Throw one is fast overarm. Possible score, bullseye or complete miss. Throw two is controlled overarm. 10, 20, or 30 points. Three underarm, anything. How many players? Is anybody want to play against me on this? Or I'll just play myself. <sighs> any volunteers? Count to ten. All right, I'll play myself. Oh, Scott says, let's do this. All right, fine. So two players. They have player number one, Stu. They have player number two, Scott. Round one, Stu's throw. I'll do uh, controlled overarm. 20-point score. Scott, what do you want to do? You might as well like just line up your... I don't know how many darts you get, but uh, give, me, give, me, give me your first three shots. We're going to get 200 points. Give me your first first five shots. Scott goes with the fast overarm. Bullseye or complete miss. Oh, it's not true because he got 20 points zone. So it's live when it says bullseye. It's probable score. You getting delays in the stream? It shouldn't be getting delays in the stream. She was working okay, I believe. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, stream is lagged? I don't see why the stream would be lagged. Uh, I can I can kill it and restart it, but I'm not like showing any drop frames or anything. The stream pause. Is it working now, Jeremy? First five. One, two, two, one, one. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try a, a two again. Ten points. Scott says two. Forty. Scott's winning right now. I'll go for the one. Thirty point zone. Total score sixty. Scott at a two. Ten points. Yes, but at a much lower resolution? That's weird. It shouldn't be 
that's I mean I, I think this maybe YouTube is like freaking out or something is everything seems okay on my end uh, I'll try one 30 point zone Scotch is for round two number one also missed the target too bad uh, Stu will try two 10 points only it's got his another one missed the target too bad all right so Scott uh give me a, give me your next five shots I'm right now winning you 150. I'll go for a one. I missed the target this time. Scott, what are your next five shots? Maybe you'll win before five shots are up. Two, he says. Ten points. I'll go with... I'll try to underarm. Three. <laughs> missed the target. Scott says two again. Ten points. I'll go with two. Twenty points. Scott says one. Missed the target. I'll go for two again. Ten points. Scott says one. Bullseye. Forty points. It's getting close here. I'll go for two. Ten points again. Ten points. One hundred and forty to one hundred and twenty. You still got. Uh, you, you you caught up quite a bit. Give me your next few few shots. I'm gonna go for the number one. Bullseye. Forty points. Scott says three. 30 point zone. <laughs> Sue's going to go with two. 10 points. Scott says one. Bullseye, 40 points. Oh my gosh. It's 190 to 190. Now is where it, this, this is where it gets uh, it's, it's the fan here. I'm going to, let's, I'll get, I'll be safe and go for two. 20 point score and Scott is going for a one. Let's see what happens. Miss the target! <laughs> we have a winner! Stu scored 210 points! Woo! <laughs> that was a close one, but uh, eventually my superior dart skill won the day, and I won. All right, let's try one more thing here, or maybe two more. I think this is just a picture. Bunny. It's like a Playboy bunny or something. You put this out on your on your teletype. Yeah, what's up, Doc? I think it's a Playboy bunny, written the with the character's bunny. Jeremy says dark games are fun. I love when they shove the Final Fantasy VII remake game in Tifa's bar. I haven't played the Final Fantasy VII game remake game. I should try that. Okay, this one is buzzword. Generator. Okay, let's just. This will be. The, I think this will be the last one for now. But let's try it. Buzzword. Not even really a game. Buzzword. Dot bass. This program. This is going to be good for you, Scott. You're a teacher, right? This program prints highly acceptable phrases in educator speak that you can work into reports and speeches. Whenever a question mark is printed, type a Y for another phrase or end to quit. What? Here's the first phrase, Tavistock Scheduling Open Classroom. So this is like making up faking buzzwords. Oh, this is good. Heterogeneous non-graded core curriculum. <laughs> you could use this, Scott, for your for your for your job. Ba Basil non-graded reinforcement. <laughs> Flexible humanistic grouping. Now, class, I'd like you all to break up into flexible humanistic groupings. And uh, let's just one more. Homogeneous humanistic environment. I'm trying to repeat words here. <laughs> Scott loves this. <laughs> I'm using that in my next job interview. <laughs> all right, we'll do one more. Scott, we'll probably repeat it again, words again. We'll try it again. Individualized vertical age core curriculum. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's. I, I think. I think we're done with this. I, I'm gonna. There's a lot more games in these books. And I think that's not enough for today. Maybe I'll play one more of the Hangman game because I think that was the best game we did tonight. Even. I mean, there were, there, there were some interesting simulations here actually. But uh, let's put back the ha Hangman game for a minute. Wait, that's not it. Where is it? Did I close the window? No, it's still here. Come on, where is it? Hello. Hello, computer. Here we go. 
do 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 all right let's try this one more time just for the heck of it it doesn't have to be a perfect size right all right i want to hear the music though scott says yes i specialize in individualized vertical heterogeneous core curriculum Oh wow, graphics! Yeah, we're doing it. This is an Atari game. Uh, uh, let's just try select a word. This is the hard level. Uh, these four-letter words are impossible. Uh, let's try A. E. Uh, I. Oh. I see. Why? Uh, what word could this be? It's not an idea. The principal comes with ladies and gentlemen, you, Professor Scott, extend the lead. I think it's Professor McAfee. Uh, I. I. Item? Nope, no T. Uh, Ices? No. Iced. Yeah, one more shot. Uh, I, 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 I have no idea. I, 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 Anybody have any word that fits in here? This is our last uh, last uh, shot here. I, I'd, I'd, I'f, I'g, I'g, I'k, Ikea, <laughs> I'll, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm gonna die. Uh, let's go with. Stu froze. I didn't, I didn't really freeze. I'm just trying to think of what the hell this answer is. I just have no idea. Right, I'll just get it wrong. Ibex. Oh my gosh, that's wow. That's that's a hard word. It's an animal, I think. All right, let's try this one more time. I want to at least get and have a more win here. All right, a longer word. Longer words are easier. Ibex is a type of animal, I think. Some kind of animal with horns or something. But yeah, these are hard words. Uh, R or S. Okay. Uh, R. Alright, that's good. T. No. This be their vowel. Let's say I. What the hell is that? Safari? No, it can't be. There's no F. No other A. Sal. Sa. Uh, what the hell? O? YouTube is acting up. Chat was five vehicles froze. What what word is this? Sabori, Sakori, Sadori, Safori, Sagori, Sahori, Sahori. I like Sajori, Sakori, Salori, Samori, Sadori, Sapori, Satori. Savori, Sawori, Saksori, Sayori, Sazori. I don't know what Satori is, but apparently that's right. <laughs> superb! Yeah, that was pretty superb. Alright, one last one. This game was like, this is the game I'm playing right now. It's sort of fun, but like, 
I have no need for this at all. Like, I'd much rather give this to, so, this to somebody who, like, maybe actually played what again in their lives. Like, I'm sure I'm never going to play this. This is the last time I'm ever going to play this game, because even though it's sort of fun, it's like, I mean, it's it's just a hangman, you know? Like, uh, this last, the very last time here. Was this written by the guy who played Detective Jenks, maybe? What does he do when he runs around from left to right? Just to give it some animation? No I. No O. There's a U. L. Ooh. Culpable, maybe? Aha. I think I'm gonna get it right. Excellent! Alright, well, this was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed some, to some extent. These are very primitive games, obviously. Um, for these two books, you know, basically, these are the. This is we played most of the time. And this game is an Atari game right here on this disc. I'm going to continue these books. I'll do another future stream where I, where I go through more of these games. I think there's some interesting stuff there. And just, it really, it's interesting for historical purposes. Just the fact that people did play these were this is all the games they had really on the computer in 1973 were the games in this book. I mean, so think about that. I mean, like if you were born a little bit earlier than you were in 1973, there was the, the only the options you had for games was either you went to a university and you had one of these games here, or <laughs> I'm laughing what Scott said, or you bought a Magnavox Odyssey. Those are the only two options for playing any type of video game whatsoever. Scott says, Cherry Head Man is not wearing clothes. <laughs> Gamer's Grotto says, this is why I feel what out of one cuts. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I mean, like, listen, it was a sad time. And that, like, It's like my kids say, like, Daddy, they didn't have cell phones when you were a kid? I'm like, no, but, like, at least they had computers when I was a kid. I mean, you know, if I only had, like, Magnavox Odyssey and the games of this book, I think my life might have turned out very differently, or maybe I'd be like I'm I'd be Bill Gates now or something. Who else knows? So, anyway, hope you enjoy it. Hit like if you haven't hit the like button before. If you're watching this after the fact, you're not already subscribed to the stream or the, to the to the channel. Please hit the subscribe button. Appreciate it, and uh, you'll get to see when we do next video like this. If YouTube actually decides to notify you, so make sure you hit the notification icon also. But thanks to everyone who was here today uh, participating. So Scott and to Jeremy, Mr. Gamers Grotto. And Lester was here before, and uh, I can't, I can't, I'm always forgetting that guy's uh, nickname, but let me find it here uh, so I can give him a shout out as well. Uh, what just happened? Where's my. Oh, here we go. I'm scrolling up in the chat. Uh, J Rock 21122. So he was here as well. So thank you, everybody, for being here, and thanks for all the lurkers who didn't say anything. J-Rock, yeah, thank you, Gamers Grotto. And uh, we'll do this again soon. So hopefully Saturday night there'll be another stream, but not this, we'll do something else, maybe another adventure game, I think. And uh, until then, peace out and have some fun playing games. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.